Okay, today's lesson is on properties of soil. So the first thing we want to do as young scientists is call it soil, not dirt. Dirt's something that you wash off before you go to dinner. <laughs> soil is an amazing natural resource. Outside of our school, outside of our houses, soil is where the plants grow, it's what we walk on, but soil is pretty interesting. Soil in different parts of the world is different. Has anybody ever been anywhere and looked at, like out of Indiana and seen the soil and it looks red? Okay, do you remember where that was? Anybody, where was that? Anybody? Yes. I've seen it in my mom's home state, Georgia. In your home state of Georgia, your mom's, that's absolutely true. The soil there is red. It has different minerals in it. Has anybody ever been out west in Texas or Arizona and seen the soil there? Well, I used to uh, live in Tucson and the soil there was real sandy and light brown. But sometimes here in Indiana, I see really dark soil. And that dark soil is good for growing plants. I don't know if you know this or not, but soil is made up of weathered rocks. What are weathered rocks? Anybody? Re weathered rocks? Yes, sir. Weathered rocks are rocks that have been broken down. Weathered rocks are pieces of rocks that have been broken down into smaller bits. And we can have weathering from mechanical, physical, we can have weathering from chemicals, or we can have weathering from a plant. You ever, have you ever seen a plant growing in the road, crack, or on the sidewalk? Yeah. Well, have you? Yes. It will just grow and break up the sidewalk. In fact, I took some kids to Turkey Run State Park this summer, and we climbed up on a sandstone rock that had a giant crack in it, and guess what was in that crack? The root of a big tree. That tree for 50 years had been growing and cracking that rock. So every time you get weathered rock, it gets moved by wind, water, and ice. What do we call that process when something gets moved from here to here? Anybody know what that's called? Yes, it starts with, what is Hello. it? Go ahead. You said it? Yes. Erosion? Everybody yes. say it. Erosion. Erosion. And so when wind, water, ice causes erosion, it moves some of those broken rocks and mixes them and it erodes them and does what over here? It deposits, deposits them. So the land is always changing. Now, what does it got to do with soil? Well, every time there's erosion and weathering, and dead plants and leaves and grasshoppers and insects and all the things that ever were alive when they die on the ground they get de what they get deposited and decomposed and they turn into soil and on average it takes see but this big about by three centimeters it takes about ten thousand years for that much soil to form so when you go home today or on a recess, scoop up some soil and hold it in your hand because in there are the weathered sediments and the dead decomposed pieces of deer, squirrels, plants, leaves, nuts, insects. Kind of gross, yes. but yes. kind of cool. <laughs> now, why is that good for Indiana? I'll tell you why. If we took a seed and we put it in the soil, where I used to live in Arizona, out in the desert. Well, there's sunshine, plants need sunshine. Yeah. There's not much water. But if I brought water and I watered that seed, would there be a good seed that would grow? Would it grow? Probably not as good as in Indiana because there are no nutrients in the sand. The sand is not very good with nutrients. There's not a lot of good soil there. Now, there's some places in Arizona there's good soil, but in Indiana we have really good soil. When the glaciers came down thousands of years ago, they scraped soil from Canada. When they melted, they left the soil here. That's why we have such good farmland. You know that we're number one in growing popcorn in the world? We're, sometimes, uh, sometimes we're one, sometimes we're two. But we're number one and two for tomatoes and maybe four or five in soybeans. And that's because our soil is so good. You want to save our soils. People around the world that don't have a lot of food, it's because they don't have a lot of soils. So today we're going to do a lesson called Properties of Soil.
Hi, my name is Miss Wise, and we are here at North Wayne Elementary with fourth grade, and we are learning about how much water soils can hold. We're gonna do an experiment today, and we're gonna work with some loam. We're gonna work with some, um, all different kinds of soils. We've got lids and cups and graduated cylinders and funnels and grams and, and a, a scale and balance, and we're gonna figure out how much, the so or how much water the soil in these cups and different combinations of soils can hold. Okay, that was a great introduction of what we're gonna to do today. So you have two types of soils. When we're talking about soil properties, we can talk about its color, its texture, how heavy it is. We could talk about what's inside of it. But today we're gonna to talk something very important is which soils holds the most water. So if you watered it or if it rained, does the water stay in the soil or does it so Soak up or run out. run out. And so we have two types of soils at your desk. One is a dark humus soil, kind of a loam soil. Take a look at that. And the other one is a sandy and gravel soil. Okay, take a look at that. There's rocks and holes. Well, you have two types of soil. We have some filter paper. What I'd like you to do is take your two pieces of filter paper out and let's find the one soil that's sandy and gravel. Find which one is the sandy gravel soil. Put three spoons, three spoons of sandy gravel soil on your filter paper. Go ahead and do that. And three. You have three spoons of sandy gravel soil. Put that on the balance scale, all right, on one side, and you notice it goes down, right? Now, how many spoons of the other type of soil, the humus loam, do you need to put to make them even? So let's put three, and if that doesn't work, you might need to put more. Go ahead and try that. All right, so you got this to balance. What did you do to get it to balance? We needed six scoops of loam soil. Which one's the loam soil? This one. The dark. Okay, six the dark scoops one. of loam soil. And we need three uh, sanding, sand, sand and gravel. Three sand scoops of grand and savile soil. So, the, so we can, the sand and gravel is two times stronger than the loam. Nice. That was a nice observation. Okay, so you guys have put the uh, filter in there and you put the lid on it. Very good. Excellent. Let's try the other one. Okay. So you're going to put the filter in here. Hold it down. I'll help you hold it. This one's tricky, huh? Okay. Hold it down. Pinch it. And set it down. Go ahead and get the lid on it while I hold it. Where's the lid? There you go. Before you push, let's get it all on there. There we go. Now don't shake these because it's, it's pretty good, but they're not perfect, right? Nice job. Okay, we know that they are both equal amounts because we balanced it, but I'd like us to find the mass of just one of these. 
Okay, in your book, you'll see on the page where you fill in how many grams this is. So to do this, what we're gonna do is put one of these, just one, and carefully put it upside down on the balance scale. Then I would like you to take your bag. Here's how I like to do this. Y'all, you're gonna help me, John. Just take some. Let's put your bag on the scale. And what happens? Oh, that's too much. So we need to take some of these out, right? Okay. So we're gonna find the mass. I would use the bag because that way they won't fall off. So let's see, is that? That's not enough. So uh, put a couple more, one at a time, one, two, until they're balanced. Good job. Oh, it's starting to come up. Maybe one more, maybe one more. Up top. See how it's balanced? Now all you need to do, you and your partner count these. These are one gram and it tells you how much is the mass of this. Go ahead, count them. We don't count those, we count these. Okay, so we had 77 grams of the dry loam and 77 grams of the sand and gravel. Go ahead and record that in your books. Now it's time to add the water. We're gonna do, do two steps. Number one, your partner is gonna use the graduated cylinder and you're gonna put 50 milliliters of water in it. You don't need to use the funnel. 50 milliliters of water. And so that looks, tell me Joshua when to stop, okay? Tell me when it's right at 50. I'm going to stop. Stop. A little bit more. Excellent. 50 milliliters. How's that? Good. All right, here's our next step. Here's my 50. Now, this part's kind of tricky. What I want you to do is take your funnel and gently, without breaking it, push it in the cup. And would you go ahead and pour the 50 milliliters into the loam? Here we go. 50 milliliters of water. Slowly. Keep going. Excellent. Now this water is dripping through right now. So let's repeat that. You guys go ahead and put 50 milliliters again, and we'll repeat that with the second soil sample. Go ahead, get started. Yes. Okay. So here we go. Here's nothing. Here's and there you go. Perfect. So now we got to do that to the next one. I'm ready. Gently pour it in. Now we got to pour it in. Gently. Keep going. A little bit more. Enough. Oh, too high, too high, too high. We're going to pour some back in. Okay, we've had a chance now for 50 milliliters of water to soak through the sandy soil and 50 milliliters of water to soak through the humus loam, right? Wonder which one went through the most. Let's find out. Hand me your two samples. Okay, and where is your paper towel? Let's take your paper towel and set it right here. Now watch, we're going to carefully save the water. Don't squeeze this, okay? Don't squeeze it. Let's lift up this one. Watch me do this first, then you guys do it. Help me pick that up out of there. Ready? Don't dump it in. If you dump it in the soil water, it's going to make a problem with our experiment. So we lifted that up. There's, there's some water in this one, right? So that's the, the humus. Let's, let's take a look now. Leave that right there. Let's, oh, look at the sandy one right here. Let's see what happens in this one. Lift it up, help me lift it up. Don't drop it into the water sample. All right, so we have two things of water. Which one has the most water, do you think? 
the sandy one. So the soil with the humus held the water, the sandy washed it out. We can measure that too. So you go ahead and pour the, the loam water there and you go ahead and let's use the funnel and you go ahead and where's your funnel? Hand me the funnel. And you pour the sandy water in there. We'll see which one has the most. Go ahead. Okay, so your, your, how many milliliters of sandy water do you have? 43. 45 what, milliliters? Yeah, it's 45, and how many does yours have? 25, 28? Yeah. So the loam only gave up 28 milliliters, and the sandy gave up how much? 40. About 45. So, was your hypothesis correct? Did you guys think that the humus would hold more water? Yeah. yeah. And the sandy would let the water go through? Yeah. Well, that's how it worked with these two students. I'd like the rest of you to finish this on your own and see if you have evidence for which type of soil holds, holds the most water. Go ahead and finish the experiment. <laughs> No, but gently, gently, just make sure it doesn't break. Make sure it doesn't break. Oh, put it on the paper. Okay, let's measure it. Let's measure it. Thank you for joining us today. We've learned so much about how much water soil can hold. We've enjoyed our time doing this. We're going to do some more investigations with soil this week and next week. Thanks for joining us.